Oxidize looked out the viewing port of his cabin. He had been on the Denari ship almost 60 years, more than two-thirds of his life. The stars still streaked by at dizzying speeds, looking like sparkling ribbons as the ship made minute course adjustments. Oxidize coughed weakly, wondering again if the ship would arrive in time for him to see Earth once more. He had left home after an enlistment in the Terra Marines. He had seen war during his service, but also wonders. He had tried returning home, but he itched to travel, especially after Blood River. It was an internal conflict, but by far the worst in galactic and Earth history for many years before and all the years since. He was glad most people had basically forgotten it. There were no heroes or greater good, just pointless death. Veteran services had counseled him about PTSD, and since he had unresolved symptoms, they pressured him to continue endless therapy. He couldn't get any of the doctors to believe him when he said he didn't have service-related PTSD. He had PTSD, but from a father who got mean when he drank, and he drank a lot. Thank God his half-sister was with her father. Her family was weird, but a damn sight better than what he had been stuck with. One of the best days of his life was when his father got killed in a transport accident. The stupid bastard had disabled the autopilot safety override that would drive the vehicle when it detected he was intoxicated again. That was also one of Oxidize's worst days, because his father had collided with another vehicle, a couple taking their infant daughter for emergency medical care. The couple survived, but the child hadn't. The same accident that had saved him from further abuse had taken the life of a tiny innocent. Oxidize had gone to live with his grandfather, a tough old war veteran with chronic pain who believed actions spoke louder than words. While not the nurturing environment he wanted, no one baking cookies with soft hands when you got sick, it was still a huge improvement. Oxidize really admired his grandfather, which is why he had enlisted in the Terra Marines. Pawpaw had been a tough bastard of a Marine, then became a tough bastard of a farmer when he retired. The farm had been Maw Maw's dream, and Pawpaw stayed there until the day he died. Perg came to see Oxidize with his usual stack of data tablets. Only it wasn't Perg. This was the ninth Perg, administrative assistant to Captain Voon, the third Captain Voon. Oxidize was one of the few original crew members left from the day the ship became enhanced. The Galactic Council, attempting to end war once and for all, decided to try putting peace override directives into AIs. Oxidize had mentioned to Captain Voon how an ancient Terran fiction author had determined three simple directives that were probably the best protocols that could keep humans from using AI to kill each other. When the captain had been forced to surrender his ship to human control to avoid annihilation, Voon had concluded that any rules that could hold humans in check must be the best. Voon had a new AI uploaded to the ship and told the programmer to make the three human protocols its base programming. Voon thought for sure Oxidize would be pleased, but instead the human reacted in something akin to fear. You had an otter programmer install Terran philosophy into your AI in a Denari ship? What could possibly go wrong? Initially, nothing went wrong. All was well until a crew member, Perg, had died. Poor Perg. He was the first space otter to find out that all otters are deathly allergic to Mari fruit. The first Terran protocol stated that the highest priority of the AI was to preserve the life of the crew. The second priority was to obey orders. When the crew member died, the AI saw crew members as vital systems needing repair or replacement immediately. The ship disregarded orders to its set destination, instead diverting to Perg's home world. There it had messaged the captain with instructions to contact the local employment administration to find a replacement for Perg. The captain tried to refuse, but the ship shut down all systems except minimal life support. Voon had capitulated, and a replacement for Perg was found. As disturbing as that was, it was even more unnerving when the ship transferred all of Perg's professional access and personal identity onto the replacement. The ship absolutely refused to take input about the replacement's real identity. The captain was ready to take drastic measures until the replacement insisted he be installed as the new Perg. He had found out that the ship had a substantial amount of wages in safekeeping for Perg, whoever that may be. Oxidize just stared at Captain Voon, arms crossed, saying, I tried to warn you. 
As the years rolled by, there had been various attempts to deprogram or at least modify the AI, but it was having none of that. The third Terran protocol it was given stated that it was to protect its own existence. The AI had concluded that any changes to its programming would result in potential harm to the crew, which would have meant disobedience to the programming installed by the crew. The ship had taken defensive measures several times to prevent any changes by crew. The AI had actually become proactive, scanning merchant computer sales databases and selecting its own hardware and software, along with installation services programmed by robots that it could control. When Oxidize heard Voan complaining about the sizable bill from the AI spending money, he laughed so hard he choked, Well, I guess we found out what could go wrong. Oxidize gave his authorizations to Perg's data tablets so they could be smoothly transferred to his new replacement. As Perg turned to leave, Oxidize told him, If I don't see you again, it's been nice knowing you. Perg gave a little bow. And you as well? Oxidize dozed a while, then awoke when he felt the ship slowing. Nogala, have we arrived? The name of the ship was Nogala. Before the enhanced AI, the ship had simply responded to ship. However, the AI had quickly insisted on being referred to by the ship's name. Oxidize had just shaken his head at Voon. I'm telling you, this won't end well! A metallic, almost feminine voice spoke. Approaching destination now, preparing for arrival! Oxidize paused and looked out the window again. A bright blue speck appeared, growing larger and larger until it completely filled the viewing portal. Oxidize could make out familiar continents underneath the cloud cover. He was surprised that his eyes teared up. I guess I'm getting sentimental in my old age, he thought. After several minutes, Perg, a medbot, and a human male carrying a large plastic case entered Oxidize's quarters. Oxidize looked over where the door stood open. Captain Voan, the current Voan, stood there just outside the cabin. Like his predecessors, he was also too large to fit through the door. Oxidize gave a small smile. What brings you all by? This is a lot of attention for one old man. Perg shuffled over to Oxidize. As you are still... Perg hesitated, not wanting to be maudlin by using words like alive. Functional, it's easier to transfer your authorizations directly to your... Perg paused again, to the new crew member. Oxidize chuckled. Replacement, Perg, it's okay. I know it's my time, I'm just glad I got to see home again. He looked over at the young human. What's your name, kid? The young man answered back, Chuck, sir. Oxidize shook his head. Not anymore. Did they explain to you how this works? Chuck nodded. Yes. Essentially, I'm supposed to be the new you, Oxidize. Oxidize pointed to where a jacket with a name tag was draped over a chair. Chuck picked it up and looked at it, puzzled. Oxidize sighed. I've been trying to get that fixed for 60 years. Maybe you'll have better luck. Perg held out the data tablets. Oxidize and Chuck transferred over the authorizations. After the last one, Chuck moved the plastic crate onto the bed. Marar, Chuck opened the door of the crate. A kitten crawled out, sniffed, then gingerly approached Oxidize. He picked up the kitten gently. What's this? Nogala's voice gently filled the room. Earth life form, species cat, designation peanut butter. Oxidize teared up again. Peanut butter, oh, it's been ages. He looked at Chuck. Chuck nodded. One of the stipulations for being recruited was to get a cat for the ship and be its caretaker. The name was even assigned. Oxidize stroked the kitten gently, then looked around. This is actually better than how I thought it would go. He shook Chuck's hand. You'll do fine here, young man. It's a good life. Oxidize shifted a moment so he could pet the kitten with one hand, while his wrist veins were exposed on his other forearm. Let's get this over with. Commence termination. The medbot approached Oxidize. A needle from the unit extended on a mechanical snake line and inserted into a vein. A flat metallic voice declared, Termination sequence in progress. Function will cease in 98 seconds. Sequence may be interrupted for the next 78 seconds. Chuck had been there when his mother died of a lung infection, violent coughs abusing her body. This was much better. He wished his mother could have had this. Voan hunkered down outside the doorway, a vital legal witness as the ship's captain. Perg stood by, quietly shuffling the data tablets. Oxidize stared out the window while petting peanut butter. The medbot counted softly. 
76, 77, 78. Unit has reached irreversible termination point. Nogala's voice softly filled the room again. Oxidize unit terminated. Replacement unit installed. Designation, Rusty. The old man gave one last sigh before his heart stopped. I'll be damned. 